Autophagy is likely a buzzword that you've heard recently in this health and longevity space. If you want to know more about what autophagy is, why it's so important, and how to extract the most out of it, that's what we're going to cover in today's video. So before we get into the details of autophagy, I just want to create a baseline understanding that your body is made up of trillions of cells, but those cells are constantly replaced by new cells. So the you that is sitting here listening to this video today is not the you of three days ago, let alone three years ago, let alone 10 years ago. Your cells are constantly dying and renewing or being recycled to keep your body functioning and optimized, hopefully, throughout your entire lifespan. There are really two main mechanisms of that cell turnover. Autophagy, which is basically cellular recycling, and apoptosis, which is cell death. Both of them have a very specific and important function in removing cellular waste, cellular dysfunction, senescent cells. And when we look in the longevity space and we're talking about health span versus lifespan or your overall biological age versus your chronological age, one of the things that we're looking at is how efficient are those systems in replacing the sick and dysfunctional cells with mobilizing new stem cells into those areas, keeping your body, keeping your cells younger, more vibrant, and more able to function at optimal levels. One of the key hallmarks to age-related chronic illness is increased cellular senescence. A senescent cell is a cell that is still alive, really cannot replicate, won't die, and is creating an amount of cellular dysfunction, elevated inflammation, and mixed signals between neighboring cells creating confusion and disruption inside that cell or tissue type. One of the mechanisms of your immune system is to recognize senescent cells or other types of cellular dysfunction and either repairing the function or recycling or killing the cell, allowing a new cell to take its place. From a metabolic and cellular repair mechanism, there's really two main pathways, a catabolic pathway, which is the pathway of breaking things down, and an anabolic pathway, which is the pathway of building things back up. It's essential for health and longevity to be metabolically flexible enough to utilize both of those pathways strategically and purposefully for improved health over decades and decades. Where does autophagy come in? Autophagy is literally cellular recycling. It is a way of breaking cells down or breaking certain organelles or systems down inside of the cell and replacing them with new organelles or replacing that entire cell with stem cells, improving the youth and the vitality of those cells inside of whatever tissue it is that we're talking about. The body has a natural way of looking for and creating autophagy. It's happening in everybody all of the time. That being said, the strongest stimulant to autophagy is cellular adversity. And so as a very general statement, industrialized nations have become more and more comfortable in their lives. In certain ways, we have less exposure to some of the natural adversity that we would have been exposed to that would help stimulate increased levels of autophagy. And as a result, that comfort has led to much higher levels of cellular senescence. At the same time, the world that we live in has become far more toxic than ever before. And in so many ways, those toxins live inside of our cells. And so if we're not cleaning out old, sick, and dysfunctional cells that happen to also be accumulating toxins that are higher today than ever before, then we are building a reservoir of dysfunctional cells that are causing inflammation and cellular signal disruption while also accumulating those toxins inside of our body. And autophagy is an incredible way to not only clear out that dysfunction, but also to clear out waste products and to clear out toxicity. Because our environment is now no longer creating that natural amount of adversity, we need to look for what I like to call strategic adversity to stimulate those pathways periodically so that we know that we're stimulating those same systems that we were built with on purpose to do what our body would naturally want to do. And as a result, we can renew our body, we can renew our cells, we can remove toxicity, and we can improve biological age, which means improve health span while also improving longevity. If you want to learn more about this strategic adversity, or in other words, hormesis is really what we're talking about, I did an entire video series on hormesis and different ways to stimulate hormesis throughout our life as a strategy for improving your health. So we'll leave a link in the description below to that video series that we did so you could check that out after this video. Inside this health and longevity space, autophagy has come up numerous times 
specifically around fasting. Fasting is a very specific hormetic response. By not relying on food for energy, your body starts to look for stored energy as a source for fuel. And as a result, the body has to go into storage and actually start breaking down cells and releasing stored energy. And that process is part of autophagy. And so this word has come up around fasting, whether that's intermittent fasting or one meal a day or block fasting over a number of days. And different amounts of autophagy come from different amounts or different durations of fasting. Hundreds of years ago, let alone thousands of years ago, fasting was something we did by default. It was just a necessary part of our life. We ate when food was available and we fasted when food was not available. Today, you could buy anything you want whenever you want. And as a result, we have lost the metabolic flexibility that our bodies really require to be healthy. And now initiating a fasting response helps to stimulate and initiate this autophagy pathway. But fasting is not the only strategy for upregulating autophagy. Hyperbaric, as an example, also helps upregulate autophagy. And there have been a number of studies looking at how hyperbaric may help stimulate or increase this autophagy pathway. We'll link a couple of those studies below in the description in case you want to take a look. Like many other strategies that we utilize for improving people's health, combining fasting with hyperbaric can be an incredible way to really draw out the benefits of both and really push that autophagy pathway much, much harder than either one can do alone. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. For a patient that's relatively healthy, that is something we can utilize almost right away. For patients that are dealing with pretty advanced disease, that's something we have to tread lightly with. In other words, have them introduce certain types of fasting and build their fasting muscle over a period of time, exposing them to some hyperbaric, building pressures over a period of time. And when they start to become more resilient, we can combine those two. We know that fasting is a strategy that initially removes glucose, eventually stored glucose or glycogen, eventually moving into fat metabolism, and then ketosis. We know that fat metabolism and ketosis requires a higher amount of oxygen availability to really get the most out of that type of metabolism. So as we're moving people into fat metabolism and ketosis and using hyperbaric to drive more oxygen, we can really burn that metabolic fire to get the most energy out, as well as stimulate those pathways to pull more of that stored energy out of the system and really utilize it for improved healing, regeneration, and stem cell mobilization, which is really what we want as a result of autophagy. Please keep in mind that there's those two pathways, the catabolic and the anabolic. You do need both. In some cases, this anabolic pathway has gotten a lot of bad press because it's the pathway of healing and regeneration, but it could also be linked to pathways of things like cancer. And so as people learn about fasting or autophagy, they start to swing so hard into this catabolic pathway that they forget that they still need to rebuild. And so while most people have spent their entire life in that anabolic mode, stimulating pathways of healing and regeneration, but also potentially stimulating pathways of chronic illness. And then they learn about these catabolic pathways, and it seems like that's what we was really missing, which in many cases it was. That doesn't mean that now catabolic pathways are everything that you want and you have to avoid anabolic pathways. What it means is you strategically create and press the catabolic pathway. You help your body get rid of waste, cellular debris, and toxicity. And then you move into the anabolic pathway, recovery, repair, regeneration. Then you move back into the catabolic pathway of clearing out more toxicity, more cellular debris, more waste products. And you move back into the anabolic pathway. If you don't do that, and I see this very often, people stay in that catabolic pathway too long and there's consequences of living there too. Just like everything else in our life, some type of balance needs to be found. Initially, it's okay for people to stay in that catabolic pathway longer because they've probably spent decades outside of it. So we can do a long stint and we see so many benefits of that, which is what initiates people wanting to stay there often. But once we really have created enough of that momentum, 
learning how to ping pong between both pathways is the most important part of this entire strategy. The interesting thing about hyperbaric is there are studies that show evidence that it helps stimulate further autophagy pathways. And at the same time, we also know that it's a therapy that stimulates the growth, repair, and regeneration of tissue. How is it possible that that therapy can swing in either direction? It's quite simple. Breaking down, recycling, and removing cellular debris, waste products, and toxicity takes energy. So oxygen helps provide the body with the energy it needs to recycle those cells. Tissue healing, tissue repair, tissue regeneration requires energy. And oxygen provides the body with the energy required to heal those tissues or to mobilize stem cells into that area. So essentially, all oxygen is doing is providing the body with an ingredient that it needs to create the energy necessary to utilize catabolic pathways and anabolic pathways. And so essentially, it's a very safe and effective therapy, regardless of which side of that equation you're trying to stimulate. Because oxygen essentially is not the treatment or the cure for anything. It's simply a necessary required ingredient for almost all of our cellular functions. And quite honestly, all we're doing is providing higher amounts of that ingredient for better performance. I hope this video helps you understand what autophagy is, how important it is, that it needs to be part of your strategy, and how utilizing hyperbaric and strategy like fasting could really maximize your autophagy. And don't forget to create those periodic shifts from being catabolic to being anabolic and vice versa. So important for the full value of these strategies to really work for you. I appreciate your time and attention. If this was helpful for you or you know somebody that might benefit from this because they're trying to figure out autophagy and how to utilize it the best way, please feel free to share the video and of course, subscribe to the channel so you can get your next week's video. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.